Okay, welcome back to our mini-series that covers how polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping. If you want to go back and watch the introductory video to this series, you can find it in the description below. It's where we go over the arguments, how they're derived and so on. A bunch of cool stuff. The second video was about how polyphasic sleep directly affects the mortality of people and health of people and I highly encourage you to also watch that, that video if you haven't done it already. Um, but regardless, today's video is on the topic of whether polyphasic sleeping or the lifestyle of polyphasic sleepers is healthier than that of monophasic sleepers and let's jump right into it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So we're going to start off by discussing the stress that modern society forces on people. How, danger it is, how dangerous it is and how polyphasic sleeping can be used to alleviate this stress. The first study we'll explore is called cell aging in relation to stress, arousal and cardiovascular disease risk factors. And it's written by Appel et al. So yeah, the paper examined the relationship between cardiovascular diseases and stress, as well as telomere uh, shortness, which has been associated with cardiovascular diseases. So the research, uh, researchers found that shortened telomere lengths were related to elevated stress hormones, uh, and thus the stress increased the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. So according to this paper, you have a higher risk of developing cardiovascular diseases when you are stressed, which is not ideal by any means. Another paper called Chronic Stress at Work and the Metabolic Syndrome Prospective Study by Candola, Bunner and Marmot investigated the association between stress at work and the development of metabolic syndrome with over 10,000 participants. The study found a relation between exposure to work stressors and developing metabolic syndrome and that employees with chronic stress were much more likely to have this syndrome than those who didn't have work-related stress. And they conclude that a plausible biology link between psychological stressors from everyday life and the development of heart diseases exist. Okay, so stress increases the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases, but that's not the only link there is between stress and health issues. A study by Powell et al. called uh, Stressor-Induced Alterations of Adaptive Immunity to Vaccination and Viral Pathogens found that stress significantly reduced the immune system's resistance to infectious diseases, plus uh, that it also reduced the body's chance of developing an immunity towards diseases when administering uh, vaccination. So stress also reduces the capacity of your immune system, but there's also a link between stress and memory decline, which Peavy et al. examined in the paper Effects of Chronic Stress on Memory Decline in Cognitive Normal and Mildly Impaired Older Adults. They found that chronic stress impaired older people's cognitive performance when they suffered from a mildly impaired cognitive performance or had no prior cognitive performance. Uh, or yeah, no prior uh, decreased cognitive performance, should I say. So in other words, cortisol was found to have neurotoxic effects over time, which led to suffering from an impaired cognitive performance. And lastly, we will look at the study by Eppel uh, et al. called Accelerated Telomere Shortening in Response to Life Stress which found that both psychological and perceived stress were linked to a higher oxidative stress, a reduced telomere activity and shorter telomere lengths. If you don't know what telomeres are, we made a video on whether telomeres can show that polyphasic sleeping is dangerous in a previous video, which you can find linked in the description. Check it out after this one. Okay, so clearly stress is very bad for you and I don't expect anybody not to know this, but I just wanted to support that with some actual studies. But how can polyphasic sleep help with this? Well, the extra time you gain from polyphasic sleeping can both be used to spread out your duties and work, as well as be used as me time, which is something polyphasic sleepers do very frequently actually. 
If you're interested in learning more about anecdotal experiences with polyphasic sleeping, you can check out our video where we interviewed polyphasic sleeper Ali, who for example uses the time she gains from sleeping polyphasically on self-care. Uh, the link to it can also be found in the description. People who do this will by default have lower stress levels, and polyphasic sleeping can therefore be very healthy, at least by reducing stress levels. Okay, so let's talk about another important aspect that polyphasic sleeping helps with, namely the strictness of your sleep schedule. According to the current meta in the polyphasic sleep community, a successful adaptation to a polyphasic sleep schedule essentially necessitates a strict sleep schedule, which will which you will see me preach uh, about in several of our videos on this channel. Regardless, having sli strict sleep times is shown to be much healthier than an unstrict schedule. Um, while there isn't inherently a perk to polyphasic sleeping, as some monophasic sleepers may also be strict with their sleep times, it's still much more prevalent in the polyphasic sleep community to be strict with your sleep times, which is why we will actually use this claim here. In this part we will examine how an unstrict sleep schedule is much more unhealthy than a strict one. Uh, I'll base this claim on the findings of Gu et al called Total and Cause Specific Mortality of US nurses working rotating night shifts, which compared the mortality of people with rotating shifts uh, to those who didn't have rotating shifts. Now of course, going to bed at 8 in the morning one day and 11 in the evening the other is pretty extreme compared to shifting your habitual sleep time by say an hour each way. But I'll use this extreme study to highlight the downsides of actually shifting your sleep times frequently. The negative effects are also going to be exponentially highlighted here though, so, so keep that in mind. It's not uh, super accurate, but it gives an indication for whether it's actually dangerous or not. Okay, regardless, what did the study find? Well, the nurses who worked rotating shifts had a much higher chance to die prematurely because of cardiovascular issues, as well as lung cancer. This is clear evidence that it's unhealthy to vary the sleep times or the time to go to sleep. And a strict polyphasic sleep uh, schedule accompanied by a strict dark period is expected to tilt you to the safer side here, let's say. These findings are supported by a study by Jurgensen et al. called Shift Work and Overall and All and Cause Specific Mortality in the Danish Nurse Cohort, where they found that the nurses who worked rotating and night shifts had a much higher mortality with respect to cardiovascular disease, di cardiovascular uh, diseases, diabetes, Alzheimer's and dementia notably. Um, so it's clearly bad to constantly shift your sleep times. The first paper presents some suggestions as to why shift work increases people's mortality rates. Um, they postulate that several biological mechanisms uh, make the association plausible, like an activation of the autonomic nervous system, which is uh, responsible for the primary mechanism in control of the fight or flight responses that regulate bodily functions like the heart rate, digestion, respiratory rates, and so on. Other causes for the increased mortality rate were an increased inflammatory state and changes in lipid and glucose metabolisms, which have been described in night shift workers in the previous studies too. When discussing factors that have nothing to do with mortality and just assess the well-being of people, there's a paper by Fisher et al. called Irregular sleep and event schedules are associated with poorer self-reported well-being in US college students, which examines how the strictness of student sleep schedules affect their subjective well-being. The correlation they found is that when students have irregular sleep schedules, they feel the worst indicating that there's not only a negative physical effect to having an irregular sleep schedule, but also a mental one. That said, the negative feelings of well-being can be a precursor to physical side effects as well. It just hasn't been evaluated in this study. As already mentioned, the community recommendation 
uh, is to be very strict with your sleep times. And because of that aspect, polyphasic sleep helps people be more healthy than monophasic sleepers, at least those who are unstrict with their sleep times. So in conclusion, there are many different ways to show that polyphasic sleeping is, at least partially, healthier than monophasic sleeping. You should now have a much better arsenal of uh, facts to defend yourself with if a skeptic of the science questions your choice in following a polyphasic sleep pattern. Although, as already said, uh, what's presented in this post is not the full story since only the positive parts of polyphasic sleeping are discussed here. Regardless, hopefully you learned something new about polyphasic sleep and its relation to monophasic sleep in this series. Mm. So this video was very heavy on studies and I don't think I asked you this before but are you interested in hearing like me talk about specific studies or would you much rather have me just you know link the studies in the description and say that you can find information about them here. Um, personally I feel like this is good because I doubt that many of you would actually read the study, so when I present the uh, basis of the study, the conclusions found, you at least get something to base it on, you don't just have to rely on the information being in the description, you know, but be sure to share with me what you feel about this, so that I know how I can tailor make the videos to better suit you and what you want. Anyways, have a good day and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Remember to nap well, people!